Reports of Harry and Meghan's near catastrophic car chase with the paparazzi were all over the pr front pages this morning as more and more details emerged about what happened to the couple after the awards ceremony they attended in New York on Tuesday night. Now, joining me to discuss the latest are the host of To Die For Daily podcast from LA, our very good friend Kinsey Schofield, and a former VIP protection officer who has looked after most of the working royals, including uh, Prince Harry, uh, Harry Tangi. Harry Tangi, is that, sorry, Prince Harry, Harry Tangi. Harry, uh, Kinsey, welcome. Um, can I just, can I just start with you if I can, Kinsey? Can you sort of, give us the latest from America that we know. Last night on Piers, in fact, I'm going to start by playing this to both of you. Last night on Piers, Sonny Singh, who was the taxi driver who took them home, spoke exclusively. This is what he had to say. We were blocked by a trash truck, and then all of a sudden, paparazzi just came out of nowhere and just flashes just went off. How many paparazzi would you say there were when, when you uh, had them in your I cab? Say, uh, six. Six that i seen. And there were about two cars following us uh, as we, as the trash cup, a trash truck moved, and there were two cars following us. Kinsey, what's the latest? Well, I love that you have Harry on because it, you CNN talked to Chris Sanchez, who is part of the royal security detail. Obviously, he spoke to CNN with permission from Harry and Meghan because you know they're very secretive. And he said that they were immediately followed from the event by dozens of vehicles, and he had never seen or experienced anything like this before. He said that the public were in jeopardy at several points. He also explained that the couple had switched cars more than once during the incident you know i'd love to know from harry um you know how how experienced is somebody like chris sanchez if he's saying he's never seen anything like this before and he's supposed to be on harry's security detail i agree harry delighted to have you on harry's an armed response vehicle sergeant in cornwall 30 years in the police you've looked after many of the royals tell me your view of the security that was part uh, of of last night and and the conflicting stories that have come out mm. Yeah, listening to it very early on, I thought there's more to this. There's, and slowly this information has come out. So it's, it's really interesting to hear uh, how it has. Basically, I find when you're working in within the police and you're armed protection and you have a myriad of resources available. And, you, you know, I mean, often I would be at a, um, a, a, a venue and things would be busier than we thought. So we could call on local officers and they would assist and they wouldn't even question it because I was a police sergeant. It was in a suit and I had a Glock, maybe a nine mil Glock, that side of things. And we had uh, the, the professional drivers. Things were a lot simpler. But what I did think as well, because initially we didn't know they'd gone to a place of safety. And as a police and VIP will always have certain areas that they can go to if things develop. Not exactly how they were expecting. You can only do so many recce's. Um, and things can surprise you. So the fact that they went to the precinct um, for a bit of safety initially um, makes sense. Uh, let's go. Don't, don't head for where you're going if you're getting absolutely mullered by, I think there were mopeds, motorbikes, e-bikes. The, the, that is quite frightening. And I've been, in a, I've been in a police car on my own, single crewed, driving into a rave that I didn't know was <laughs> in the middle of the forest. They all surrounded the car, and all you can see is bodies. You can't recognise anyone. And you know they can do what the hell they like, and that's not a nice position, especially with what's happened to his mother. So the fact they got him to the police station, really, really good. Then perhaps hide in plain sight. They've used a taxi. I haven't got a problem with that. And that's why a lot of the VIP convoys, especially outside of London, don't use blue lights and sirens they, because you you get lots of posh cars around anyway, um, and uh, they don't they don't draw attention to themselves. And I've got a problem with using the taxi either. Private security is tricky when the attention is this massive, and I think you've got paparazzi driving down the wrong side of um, one-way systems, I think they were saying. And, of course, when you're in a car, whether it's a taxi or a limousine, you can't go anywhere, especially in New York, I suggest. But that, um, was, that, and... that was, Harry, that was the problem, and it isn't for us at Talk TV to pass judgment, but there were conflicting stories of a high-speed chase. You've heard the taxi driver who took them back to the Montecito mansion saying that there were six cars and it was a, a dumpster. There was, a, it was, you know, suddenly there was a dumpster. I'm not, I'm, I, I, you know, yesterday morning, 
most tabloids in the United Kingdom were reporting on the fact that Harry in the High Court had been told he couldn't rent the Met as his security. So, Kinsey, are we, are we saying that this is uh, a shocking incident and should make Harry and Meghan look at their security detail? I don't know. Help me out. Well, I think first we should state, you know, I, I know a lot of people are comparing this to Princess Diana, but the fact of the matter is Princess Diana was going from point A to point B the night she died, not wearing her seatbelt and, you know, behind the wheel of an alleged drunk driver. Harry was driving around aimlessly in New York City because he didn't want the photographers to know where he was staying. He was staying at the, a private resident of a friend's. Now, Harry has taken it upon himself to protect his family. I think that this was a poor plan to begin with. Harry, if you want to protect your family, you're giving the Mist Foundation hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in free PR by showing up to this event where your wife is being honored with your wife. Yeah. You say to the Mist Foundation, put me up in a hotel. I need the best transportation yeah. possible and I need extra security. A hotel with a back entrance. I think this was a poor plan executed by Harry and Meghan. And in America, they're asking us, should we be responsible for their safety? And my answer is no. Harry quit his job. Harry needs to be better at planning his security. Um, Harry, just briefly, what, what advice would you give if that had been your gig, excuse the pun, uh, on mm. Tuesday night? What would you have done differently, briefly? You can't beat planning. You can't beat different routes. You can't beat maybe a decoy. Um, they'll just be in the back of the hotel as well. Your, your problem you've got, and, and I think what will happen in reality is there'll be a closer liaison with the NYPD. It might not be so publicised, but they're going to risk assess it. Just like anyone coming into this country, we, they will be risk assessed to see what's the threat level against these people. And if it, if it is high, even at the moment, because I would suggest that he's written his book, he's done his interviews, things are probably going to calm down from now on. Um, and hopefully this is just a blip. But it's going to be tough for a blip, private security a blip at this point. or an insight into the fact that maybe the private security that he's hired isn't up to scratch, Harry? Well, I, I would... Not, not that I would like to uh, defend private security, but they are necessary. And I'm just wondering what a different... Uh, private security would do. They don't have the resources that the police have. The simple things we can do, because we have... We can use the law on our side. Yeah, we yeah. can say, you stop there, don't move. But maybe, so maybe, my friends, that this, this whole horrible situation, and we're right to report it as straight as we are, uh, re-elevates to the front of our minds the argument that he keeps saying is that despite the fact that they've quit royal duties, they are still high-profile, high-target, yeah. And maybe uh, his argument is the royal family or the United Kingdom should pay for it. Can I finish you, Kins, by saying, um, and many people say this on social media to us, I've got to put it to you, still no word from the palace. Have they reached oh, out? Oh, oh, don't get me started, Jeremy Kyle. Where was Meghan Markle when her father had a stroke? Where, she didn't call daddy. Meghan Markle didn't call daddy when we all got notified that he was going to have to go to rehabilitation to relearn how to communicate. I do not want to hear this. This is Omid Scobie trying to make the palace the bad guys. Why should they comment? They know Harry pops off. Go back to to 2016 when he wrote that fiery letter to the media about the way they were treating Meghan Markle, that I think the palace is sitting back going, Harry being Harry, maybe over-exaggerating a little bit. I don't want to make the palace look like the bad guys here. Meghan's dad has almost died um, multiple can times. I, in can I just no say, because we know each other very well, my job is to sit in the middle. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I gotcha. I gotcha. Fantastic. <laughs> Kinsey Schofield, Harry, thank you very, very much indeed. And